held a um, represent sort of different areas of the park and across um, the corporations as well as one of our more advanced startups. So I am actually going to start with you, Sam, and have you um, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about um, how you how you got your job at Ursa, so very briefly, because we'll get into that more later, and sort of what your academic background is, and actually what Ursa does. So I'm Sam, I am a junior in agricultural and biological engineering, specializing in off-road systems engineering, which is basically just like applied mechanical engineering, but for tractors and other off-road systems. Uh, so I work for Earthsense, which is a startup in the research park that designs uh, robots for use in agriculture. The first robot design was this under canopy phenotype of data collection robot, but they branched off from that and now we're developing two or three more robots kind of simultaneously. Um, I got the job from working in a adjacent role with a uh, like the research branch of the professor who's the CEO of the company and then I uh, worked my way through that into a job management company uh, working on designing robots. Hey everyone, my name is uh, my name is Calvin. I'm a junior studying computer science and economics uh, with a minor in business, but uh, I'm a software engineering intern at a company called Cargill. Uh, has any of you heard of Cargill before? Raise your hands. Okay. Do any of you yeah, eat? I, do yeah. any of you eat? Does anybody here eat? You eat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about Cargill. Yeah. Me personally, I had not heard of Cargill before um, working there. Um, Cargill is essentially the, the largest company you've never heard of, essentially. Uh, it's technically the largest um, privately owned corporation in the United States, so they're not publicly traded like what you would see on Fortune 500. But just like consider the entire food industry mixed with the entire ag industry, and then partially the logistical and supply chain industry, and that's pretty much part of it. It's an absolute conglomerate, 160,000 employees around the world, and this is starting to sound like an ad, but Coming back to the research part, um, yeah, I, in terms of how I got the opportunity to intern at Cargill, I was actually um, in your seats, actually, in your position. I was uh, around this time last year, I was attending a research park event, a panel event similar to this. It was at the Siebel Center for Computer Science, and um, I think there was like Cargill, John Deere, and a few other companies, and I basically approached the site director. Bill after the event and pretty much give her my resume and that's pretty much how I got the job. Daniela. Hi everyone, my name is Daniela Marcazzi. I am an informatics PhD student here at university. I also did my bachelor's here. I have two bachelor's degrees in agricultural and biological engineering and I work for John Deere. Um, how many of you have heard of John Deere? I think it's probably one of the most well-known companies in ag tech, but we make tractors and all of the big machinery that you see farmers operate in order to grow your food. We also do construction as well. Um, I've been at John Deere for over five years now, which kind of blows my mind. Um, but how I got the job is kind of an interesting story. I was heavily involved in robotics and computer science in high school. I ended up founding uh, the world's largest robotics club when I was a high schooler. And I decided to create a coding class in the Department of Ag and Bioengineering when I realized that not many people in my major knew how to code. And I was given the opportunity to write about it on an ACES blog. A professor read it and he told me to apply for John Deere. He knew that there was a lot of robotics positions at the time there. Um, hi everyone, my name is Manika Gupta and I work at ATCO. I hope you guys have heard about ATCO. Uh, so, I am an information management grad student. This is my final semester and I'll be graduating in May. I started working at AFCO in uh, summer of 2022 and uh, how I got this job is uh, uh, like uh, Selvin said that uh, even I was in your position and attending all the research park events and I went to the research 
up cut your hair which was last year in the last week of February if I'm not wrong and I pushed I go I had charged with a side at that time and uh, I gave her my resume and I got a call back two weeks later. And what about Ago? It's a Fortune 500 company. I did not know this when I was interviewing for the company. When I read about it, that's what I came to know. And uh, after joining Ago, I would say I became more interested in the active field. Uh, uh, they have a mission of uh, sustainably feed, uh, feeding the world and uh, manufacturing smart machinery. And uh, I've been working in the cloud space since. So I think there's a party foul here of who put Agco next to John Deere. Oopsie. Oopsie. No, I mean, we're totally kidding, but uh, you know, we do have, of course, competitors. Interestingly enough, ADM is in the research park and technically considers itself to be, or Carville Tents, uh, considers ADM a, a, a competitor, but actually they collaborate too. So there's a lot of collaboration amongst these big companies. Um, and Agro does a lot more than build tractors, but we just like to make fun of it. Lots of people always say to me, well, don't you have Caterpillar and John Deere in the same place? How does that work? And it's never been a problem. So um, I just like to poke fun at it. And sort of one of the things we like to do in these sessions is really sort of get behind the curtain. A lot of it can be, I think, to you all who've never been in a research park or been in one of these offices or these operations can sometimes be really sort of confusing as to what is this and how does it work. So please ask questions, but um, I'm going to, some of the questions I'm going to ask is really trying to get a chance that you can walk away from the session today understanding that. So um, I guess I'm going to start with what was one thing that surprised you the most about working in the company that you're working for? And I don't know who wants to take that first. It was not actually on the question list, so I'm surprising them. Yeah, so uh, coming in to Cargill as a software engineering intern, I really wasn't sure what to expect, uh, especially from like a technical standpoint, because based off of the research that I was doing online through the interview process and before I started, Cargill is like this big agriculture company, right? Like that is the lead, agriculture and food, that is like the leading two words that come up when it, you know, when you search up Cargill. It's not like, you know, software. It's not like IT or technology. So I was honestly a little um, interested in like how that would pan out. But happy to report back that Cargill is, um, so it, for me personally, it was surprisingly technical. It was very, very, very technical. Um, I definitely coming in had like bad, like a bad perception and a, a misconstrued perception. But uh, Cargill um, is technically very advanced in my opinion and I would say, do not be surprised like I was when looking at Ag Tech at how technologically advanced these companies can be. It's not just you know big tech when you think of technology. Ag Tech is also very technical as well. I would say that is what was the biggest impression I had coming into Ag Tech. Okay. Uh, one of the things that surprised me most when uh, starting work at EarthSense was. How, how like exciting and dynamic it could be to work in a startup that's in the process of scaling up. Uh, you get the like idea that a lot of engineers are just sitting in cubicles, you know, tapping away on computers or like just doing designs in SolidWorks all day long. But one of the more exciting things about EarthSense is it's very hands-on. Uh, we have a small design team and small progressive teams for autonomy and electrical engineering. You get a very dynamic workload of one assignment and then maybe the next day uh, something's changing work on this. And that can be very exciting to get to work on a very diverse range of projects instead of just having to settle down on one sort of longer, sometimes more mundane, mundane project that can be assigned. And also getting to be able to actually take the things that you've designed and put them into action in this startup and getting to do your own do testing on them and 
you get to implement the whole design process for yourself in uh, a smaller work environment, which is very exciting for me. I agree with, oh, is it working? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I agree with what Tomlin says. I honestly didn't know that much about John Deere. Even if I did major in ag and bioengineering, I didn't know how technical a company could be, especially since I entered Deere really with the aim of working in robotics. I didn't even know they were working on robots or something so technical. I also learned a lot about R&D and working there and how cool it is that they're working on things that have never been done before. So it was a really great learning experience and just learning about all the tech that goes into the tractors kind of blew my mind and all of these different teams that come together to work on these tractors was really cool. So uh, one thing that blew my mind was uh, I think especially the mentorship that I've received, uh, not just from my manager uh, and my HR team but also from the site directors and the entire leadership that I've had because um, joining as an intern I did not have a lot of idea about um, working as a cloud intern or working in the cloud space before because it was new for me but uh, there have been multiple workshops which are organized over at the acceleration center in the research park and uh, it's, it's always very easy to approach your managers and your leaders and tell them that okay, you know, I can't have facing issues because this is something new and I might take time to learn it. But they've always been very welcoming and uh, always ready to answer your questions. I think one thing that wrote, I especially love about Apple is the mentorship that I received there. So, you all have talked a lot about skills you learn are technicals. Tell us a little bit about the peers that you work with in your company. So not just not the mentors, but the peers. And what have you learned from them? And maybe what some of the roles that they have so that maybe everyone can get a broader picture of some of the other roles available in your organizations. Uh, so one of the cool things about Earth Sense is it's uh, got a lot of different teams that all have to work together to make a functioning robot. We've got the mechanical design team that I'm on, and then we have to work with the electronics team to develop the brains and drivetrain the robot, since they're all electrical. And then we have to work with the autonomy team to integrate sensors and cameras and data collection devices. And we also have to work with the analytics team who processes that data, and all of this comes together to work to make one like properly function robot. And it's very interesting it's very interesting to see to see how uh, to communicate with these other types of engineers and developers and people to take ideas from like one field of electrical design and then implement that into uh, mechanical design and how that's going to relate to a software field. And then there's also some very good mentorship that people have. Uh, we have this consultant who's like a John Deere engineer for like 40 years and he's, he's he knows everything about mechanical engineering. It's very cool to pick his brain and just kind of absorb all the knowledge from him. And we also have a lot of uh, experienced uh, software and electronics people. And well, software stuff usually goes over my head. It's still very interesting to kind of dip a toe into those waters and see uh, how like developing a steering system relates to the physics of uh, driving an autonomous vehicle. Yeah, I just want to speak a little bit about the, um, the benefit, I suppose, of interning at Research Park. Um, I think one of its, um, and this is across the board in terms of Research Park, uh, one of its greatest defining characters is that, characteristics is that you would be interning with other interns. You know? most, of the, most of your time will be spent with other interns who are most likely, but not all the time, from your school and who are the same or you know similar age as you. So for me personally, my experience has been um, the individuals that I am working with on a day-to-day -day basis. I have grown really close with them, and it's uh, a great cohort of employees at Cargo through each semester. Um, but not just limited to the people in the office who are you know sim of similar age to you. We've had a lot of great opportunities to meet with and network 
with a lot of full-time employees at Cargill as well. So uh, during the summer, we would have like um, our site director would like host or and plan like uh, speaker events. I suppose it was just like a glorified Zoom meeting, but they had uh, it was very it was very informational and helpful. And a lot of the speakers that they brought on talked about a lot of really interesting things that were really helpful in my profession, personally for my professional development uh, going forward. So um, just these like opportunities in progressing professionally and growing your network within the companies that you're working in, I think is a coupled with the fact that you're working with individuals who you can really relate to on a day-to-day -day basis is one of the best um, characteristics of research park, in my opinion. I think I'm really lucky to work in a place where most of my coworkers I consider to be genuine friends. I often say working at John Deere is like working with your family. As cliche as that is, it's true. I've become really close to all of my coworkers. There are a bunch of different teams in our office, but something I like about our research park office is we're able to collaborate with people back at the headquarters, or I work with teams in Iowa, or my first year working at John Deere, I was able to go to Germany for a week to work on hackathons. So these are really unique opportunities where we're not just directly working with our peers in the research park, and because uh, the office has changed so much since I've started working at John Deere. I've been able to collaborate and be on multiple teams. So I started on the robotics team, mainly doing robotics engineering. I slowly transitioned to software engineering. I had the chance to work on some UI UX projects, which I never thought I would get to do, but I found out I actually really love it. And now a lot of my PhD research is based off of the things that I did during that time working on UI UX. And now I'm exploring data science. So throughout my time, at John Deere at Research Park, I've had this chance to learn so many new things that I wasn't able to learn just doing my uh, education here at U of I, and I really appreciate that, and I'm very thankful for all the great people I've worked with. So yes, I would say I love working with my peers because they, they are my age, and uh, it's so cool to know about the kind of work they're doing because it's very different from my work. Uh, there, there are interns in the, and even full-time employees, there are a lot of full-time employees as well. So they work in the data and analytics space, augmented reality, software engineers, uh, people from fluid dynamics, and just not from my school, but also from diverse backgrounds. So when I get to know the kind of work they've been doing, it, it's really interesting because I have interacted or worked with those teams, and uh, especially with those, I would say they're different verticals, and I haven't worked with them before, but to know that, okay, so this is also the kind of work that's been going on, so it's, it's really cool. Okay, so we're going to take a break here. Anyone have any questions from the audience? Quiet group. So one of the things we're going to do at our break is that I'm actually going to tell you to look at your phones. So pull out your phones and go to what is the research part that Illinois.edu. I'm going to put this up somewhere. We don't have the screen up. Research part that Illinois.edu slash careers, and that is our job board. How many of you have been to that page before on the website? Maybe a few. And you'll see that there are postings there. I know there's cargo postings. I know there's John Deere postings. Or since I know hasn't gotten me their postings, which is irritating, right? We've posted them anyway. We've posted them anyway. That's, that's not Sam's fault. <laughs> we like, we, we give them a hard time because we know them too well. And I'm not sure about ACCO if there's any current postings, but that's where you find information about positions. So if you leave here with anything, we do have cards that have that information. Again, the only jobs that we post on the Research Park job boards are jobs that are actually in Research Park. And when I say jobs, I do mean both full-time opportunities as well as internships. So. That's where you will find that. I know that there's some really cool cargo opportunities, and you might be surprised by some of the diversity of skill sets that they're looking for for those opportunities. So I know we have a very technical group here today, but I know that a bunch of the opportunities that are up there right now are like our communications, marketing, um, business, business, development. business development. So you know, there's
there is not one size fits all at the research park, and I think that's one of the best things that we have going. So if we don't have any more questions, sorry I told you all to look at your phones. Okay, put your phones away now. Okay, <laughs> you can get them back on the air if you like. Um, so Daniela kind of alluded to that, I'm going to use that as a segue, but uh, she talked a little bit about how her internship has kind of shaped and guided some of her future interests. And one of the advice that part advice, or part of the advice I always give to students is that internships are about finding what you like. They're also about finding what you don't like. So I'm curious, um, Daniela, if you want to elaborate on this more, you're welcome to. But maybe I'll start with uh, with uh, Monica. How has your internship helped shape or guide your future career goals? Oh, definitely. So um, when I started, when I was in college as a cloud intern, I would say I had absolutely no idea about what and what I'm supposed to work on or what is expected because my entire prior work experience has been in the data field. I've worked as a PI developer and I've worked on different data analysis projects, but never in the cloud space. So when I joined the team, my manager was uh, super flexible. He asked me what I was interested in, and for some reason, I said security. No idea why, but <laughs> but I'm glad I did because that is something I really enjoyed working on. Uh, so during my entire summer internship, I worked on a security and compliance project where I was working on specifically in AWS, but trying to resolve a lot of issues that I was facing at that time. And uh, how it has shaped my future goals is I always wanted to get into the cloud space, and Apple gave me a platform to do that. Uh, also, the hands-on work that I've done it really helped me prepare for my certification exams, and I completed the foundational level certification back in September last year, and I'm studying for my associate level. So I would say that this internship has definitely helped me a lot. I already kind of mentioned this, but for I want to say a year, I was working on UI/UX development for iPhone apps. Um, and as I mentioned previously, I'm an informatics PhD student, but do any of you know what that means? Or what is informatics? I think sometimes the term isn't really clear. It's a bunch of things, but essentially I study how technology impacts society, and there's lots of different concentrations. But through spending time and seeing how people use apps and the best ways to make them the most functional, I found out that I really like human-computer interaction, which is a subset of my uh, field and that was what I was studying. So that's one way that John Deere impacted uh, my career. Another way is it actually motivated me to get my PhD in the first place. A lot of times when you do R&D, it's really helpful to have an advanced degree. And a lot of the people at the office that are full-time do have PhDs. So actually, when I was talking to Jure, one of her data science managers, she got her PhD, and I was able to talk to her about the graduate school process and what being a graduate student is and what that's like. And that really helped me want to pursue an advanced degree. Yeah, in terms of uh, future career, like, uh, path, how, it, how my internship defined that. I would say it played the most important role. Um, coming into Cargill, I was actually not even a computer science major. I technically was an economics major with a minor in computer science, but I was still like eyeing the computer science plus economics program. And at that point, when I was applying to Cargill, I was an uh, economics major with an interest with an interest in science, right? So uh, programming projects was at that point pretty much a hobby. I had no idea what it was like working on a team, you know, implementing agile methodology, methodology, yeah, um, you know, completing sprints and meeting with stakeholders. I had no idea what the actual on-the-job tasks and environment was like coming in. I knew I was interested in interested in software, but I had no idea what being a software engineer entailed. And through this internship, now that I know what it's like, I feel 100% confident stepping forward into this career path. So yeah, it played a very, very important role in my future. So before I worked at since I never imagined that I would do anything with robotics. There's like the stereotypical direction of agricultural engineers that you either go to CAT or John Deere and you work on tractors. 
And I was like, okay, those are cool. But then I started working on those and I was like, wow, robots are pretty cool. And uh, it got me really interested in like, because I only previously worked on like tractors with ICD drive trains, whatever, just, you know, very, uh, the usual way they work. But then working at since has gotten me much more interested in uh, the integration of like electrical and mechanical and autonomous parts and becoming an autonomous robot. So it's got me much more interested in like the different ways you can create robots uh, to do agricultural tasks in a way that robots can impact the uh, agricultural uh, like sphere for agriculture, sorry. <laughs> but it's gotten much, yeah, I've gotten much more interested in this whole new genre of digital ag and uh, agriculture technology that I really didn't even know existed before I started working on this. So we've talked a lot about, um, you know, sort of some of the technical things that you've done on your teams, your mentors. Um, tell us something fun about your internship. Who wants to take it? I mean, I can start. It was only a couple months into working at John Deere, and like I mentioned, I got to go to Germany, which I think is pretty cool. Especially, you know, I was only a junior undergrad, and they chose me as the only student to go all across the world to work on this hack. I didn't realize at the time who they were, but looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I spent a week with them. <laughs> so that was really cool. And I think uh, another thing is we participate in a lot of the research park events. Like I remember my coworkers and I, we participated in like a ping pong tournament one summer. They also do softball, so those are some fun things we've done. Yeah, there's a lot of fun that goes into interning at Research Park. Um, kind of like stealing Daniela's point. Uh, we also had like an internal hackathon over the summer, and I would say that was one of the most fun things I got to do while interning at Cargo. It's essentially like we put down all of our projects that we've been working on for like the past five, six weeks, and we work on an entirely new idea concept for 48 hours. and. I say 48 hours, but it's actually just like 16 hours because we're not expected to be like, hacking uh, after hours, and you got to get paid for it. So it's essentially like you get to work on this really cool project in a very fast-paced environment, really chasing this new idea, and you get paid for it. I think that was really, honestly, really cool. And aside from that, um, all of the research park events were really, really cool, really amazing, and. We also had our own little uh, fun bits here and there as well. So one just general research park thing that's fun is they have like a, I'm totally blanking on the name, but it's like Fire Five or something, and it's like a fun get together for all the different uh, companies and they all go and have like a, a food event and it's fun. But then uh, something specific to EarthSense is, what I really enjoy is that uh, with a very small team, I get to be very involved in lots of things. And for me, one of the most fun parts about things is like actually building robots and building this big robot tractor that I'm currently working on. Uh, and I feel like in a lot of other companies, you want to get to actually you know stick your hands in the guts of the robot and build it yourself. But in this case, you get to. And I think that's uh, very interesting. So fun to I would say all over the summer, the entire summer. We had so many people from the leadership come here at the acceleration center and have sessions with interns or uh, talk about the company's vision. Uh, it was very informal sessions where you could approach them, talk to them. Uh, and um, we had an end of semester party where you play board games and uh, inter uh, just hang out with other interns. It's just no work related stuff, but you uh, discuss how the semester is leading. So yeah, a lot of fun activities at the acceleration center here, but definitely research park events are extremely fun. The big pong tournament that Daniela mentioned, I did participate in that, and it's just terrible. But uh, a lot of uh, enterprise work events and fire and fire, so uh, multiple events happening at the research park, which are really fun. I swear I didn't pay them to say that. But, uh, so yeah, fire and fire, what Sam was talking about is uh, one of our longest running events in the park. It's a big party actually. 
usually every the last Thursday, usually the last Thursday of each month starts from May and goes through October. So one of the many things we also do a lot of, as you mentioned, our table tennis tournaments and we have a softball league in the summer. We're hoping to maybe do a beach volleyball league this summer. Um, maybe kickball too. I don't know how many leagues we have. People like to compete against each other, we found in the research park. So um, we have other ideas, chess, I don't know. Uh, but, um, and then of course, lots of, we like to celebrate nerdy holidays like May the 4th, which is May the 4th be with you. So come on out and see us. Pi Day, always a good time. And of course, these are things that you can do anytime. You don't necessarily have to wait till you have a research park internship. Please go ahead and look at our calendar, see if there's something that you interests you, and come on out and, as I like to say, kick the tires. So, um, I did want to ask you all, I mean, obviously we're sitting here in Mason's library, so how many of you are Mason students? A good majority of you. Excellent. So, that means most of you are familiar, of course, with agriculture, but I'm kind of curious with you all, like, what was your knowledge of agriculture before you took this role, and sort of, what is that like in your organizations, um, and some of the students, the backgrounds of others that you work with, how, how, um, I guess, how knowledgeable are they with ag, what's the balance between that and amongst, you know, just asking. Honestly, I did not know a lot about agriculture before I joined APCO and I would say um, it's the same for a lot of viewers that have been learning with me. But uh, you get to know a lot more about precision planting, precision farming, about AgTech, smart manufacturing, smart machinery. There's so many things happening in the AgTech field which I got to know after I joined APCO. So I do not come from an agriculture background and an information management student. My entire background has been in information technology. So this was a learning experience and it's just been amazing. So when I first started at John Deere, I was a junior in agricultural and biological engineering, but to be honest, I didn't know that much about agriculture because in my major you can kind of choose concentrations if you want more of the ag focus side or if you want more of the bio side. And so I was mainly doing biological engineering, um, but in my team, we really have a mix. Um, there's a lot of people that come from more technical backgrounds like computer science, electrical engineering, computer engineering, uh, but then we also have a lot of people doing agronomy or soil, and so I'd say there's a nice mix of both of them. But you definitely don't need to know a ton of agriculture to work at John Deere, although it is definitely helpful. And if you do, that's great. Yeah, pretty much just echoing off Danielle's point, that's pretty much the exact same answer. I didn't have any agricultural background coming in, um, but that's not to say Harvard doesn't hire ACES students. Um, but for me personally, the work that I'm working with at Cargo, agriculture is pretty much, um, if anything, a little abstracted away for me personally. I'm working on solving technical solutions or business solutions not necessarily directly related to agriculture. It could be agriculturally related or food related, but the actual work specifically that I'm working on with my role is pretty much like a software job. So I only started with like a very sort of surface level knowledge of agriculture and what went into producing food for everything. But What's very cool about EarthSense is since they're designing these robots specific to, to a very specific need, we, they had me and the rest of the team go out to, uh, like, for example, Corteva, which is a uh, uh, seed breeding organization. But they had us go out and actually talk to the people who are farming these plants and learn from them about what their specific needs are and what all goes into their process and how we can sort of streamline that with a, with a robot that will make their lives much easier. So I've learned from a lot of different people that I've been exposed to from this internship. Any questions before I ask another one? Yeah, so in terms of uh, getting these internships, we know that there's a lot of students who apply for these internships. What do you think made you stand out to be a corporate interview and eventually given the position to be an intern? 
So I would say for me, networking was very important because uh, during the career fair, I had a chance to interact directly with the site manager at that time and the HR uh, people who were hiring. So it always makes a good impression where you can uh, talk to someone who's working at the company face to face. And I handed over my resume, and that's what worked out for me. I think uh, even talking to people who are actually working as even in terms of full-time employees at the company currently where you understand the kind of work they have been doing and you can then understand if it aligns with your skills and your interests. So uh, I think for me, just networking really, networking with the right people kind of helps you. I definitely agree with Monica. I think something else to mention, especially if you're having an interview with any of these companies, is talk about your leadership experiences or your group experiences. A lot, a lot of times, there's so many people who have the skills that you have, but what makes you unique is these experiences when working in groups. And sometimes when we're looking for people to join the company, we're not just looking at you know what's on the resume, but also if they're a good team fit. So I think that's really important. And the more unique stuff you have, I would mention it. Like, I talk about my study abroad experiences because that's just something that sets you apart from other students. I think that's a really great question. And one that is, I feel that I'm not well equipped to answer, if I'm being honest. You know, this is my first internship. I don't really have that much experience. But what worked for me was, as already sort of projected, you know, um, try to network. It definitely helps if you have that connection with the hiring managers or recruiters. And in your interviews, you know, be genuine. You know, talk about your passions and your experiences in a way that you can show them that you would be a good fit with the company. Uh, this is all just very generic advice, so I'm sorry about that. But I, I think your question is really great. So I mean, yeah, networking. I also it's definitely very important part of it because it's easier to leapfrog off of somebody you know than go through uh, just a random online application. But also something that I, that I think is really, really helpful is uh, practical experience. Like, for example, I got, uh, I think one of the major reasons I got my internship is because I had experience designing uh, larger scale agricultural vehicles. Like I built a couple of tractors for a line of colors, uh, which is the core scale tractor design team on campus. So they gave me experience designing uh, you know, bigger uh, agricultural vehicles, which no one else on the design team of EarthSense had at the time. So when they were developing, now that they're developing this bigger vehicle, I, I think I was very valuable to them in providing um, experience in that sort of uh, design view instead of just for these smaller robots. So for our panel, are all of you on LinkedIn? How many of you are on LinkedIn? How many of you are not on LinkedIn? You need to get on LinkedIn. Uh, so one of the things, one of the tips that I always gave to students is network with your other students. So I'll tell you a fun story. We had a, a site that is still at Research Park, and they said to us, "Yeah, can you guys take that job posting down? We've gotten so many resumes, and we've got a really great group, and like." I look at the person who works with me, and she looks at me, this is predates Emily's time, and she looks at me, and we're like, what is he talking about? There's no job. We, we haven't posted a job for you in like months. Well, what was happening was is that he was telling his students, his interns, about job postings, and they were telling all their friends, and their friends were the ones who were sending all the great resumes in. So students talk to one another. So get out your phone again if you want and find these guys on LinkedIn and link them because one of the things that you can do and one of the best things I think that makes this such a unique opportunity for students here to have something like this research park, which by the way does not exist. Uh, well, there are other university research parks, but nobody has as many students that intern in their research park as we do. Um, so this is a really unique way to network amongst your own peers that are alumni and will be your peers in the future and will still be alumni, all of you together, in perpetuity. So I also wanted to just point out a couple of special people who are here today who I didn't point out early. So we do have a couple of full-time folks who work in, uh, one at John Deere and one at Cargill. So Ben, you want to raise your hand? 
So Ben is, uh, we like to joke about Ben and Jen, who lead the, uh, on the full-time side at Cargo, but great team. Um, and then Trey Carter, who's kind of a research park legend. Uh, sorry about that, but Trey was a, was a uh, worked kind of like Danielle, it's had a very similar trajectory from undergrad to throughout her PhD program and is now a full-time um, lead, one of the leads at uh, the John Muir Technology Innovation Center here at Research Park. So uh, she's been in your shoes too. Ben, I don't know where you interned. Uh, not at Research Park. I knew, I knew it was that. And, and you, you network to get your job on your own. Benefit if the company's hiring for a uh, specific section. 
All right, so we've talked a little bit about some of the projects or some of the skills that you all work with or work on. What are some of the soft skills that you learned at your internship? Um, I think I'm more comfortable. So um, I would say leadership, definitely communication, because uh, we have a lot of in-person events at the Association Center where you present in front of a group of people. I have, so um, I've presented actually across the company. It was a virtual event where I had, as an intern, I had to talk about all the work that I've done this summer. So a lot of soft skills in, uh, you know, leadership, communication, being comfortable to talk about your work experience, um, working in a team because um, I can't, when you work on academic projects, you work with your peers uh, who are the same age, but when you work on corporate projects, there are people who are like 20 years more experienced than you have. So I would say working in a team, being able to support them as much as you can, learning a lot from that experience. Um, I definitely think I learned a lot about presentation skills, especially presenting highly technical information to people who may not have technical knowledge. I found can actually be quite difficult, so that was something I was able to do over the years. Also, similar to Monica, working in teams, uh, especially in teams where people may not just be not in your major, but they could be much older than you or a lot of different positions. I think that was a big thing. Uh, and another thing is time management. That's definitely one of the main things I learned because you kind of are forced to have to balance both school and also work at the same time. So that was definitely helpful. So I, uh, so I still haven't learned quite how to be as good at presenting as the rest of them. But one of the good things that I have learned is learning how to learn what you don't already know or learning how to know what you don't already know. Because for a lot of uh, the new development that we're doing, it's hard to know what goes into actually like making the thing. It's sort of an abstract thing to say, so it doesn't make any sense, I'm sorry. But uh, what I mean is like, you have to know, you have to, it, it's a very good learning process to learn how to problem solve by figuring out what the problem is in the first place. And I think that's a very uh, important skill that I've sort of developed from uh, work uh, I think this is a great point to be brought up, especially concerning like soft skills. Um, internships, in their nature, I think a lot of employers would agree that they know that you don't have a lot of technical skills. They, they, they know you don't know anything uh, coming in <laughs> as an intern. <laughs> so you can really outshine by having good soft skills. So I would definitely not underplay the importance of having good soft skills. And a lot of points, great points have already been made, especially uh, connecting to like presentation skills and packaging technical information so that a uh, top level executive who probably doesn't really uh, care about all the minor, minor details or like a not very technically inclined business person can understand. Um, other than presentation skills, and I think one of the more important things is really showing up and uh, ex like just embodying the curiosity and desire to learn through the experience. Because internships are sort of like an experience, right? It's like it's a it's a learning experience. You're like kind of like shadowing, and but yeah, I would just say main point is don't be afraid not to know things coming into the job, because they already know you don't know coming in. I might have to put that on a slide. They already know you don't know. <laughs> 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 um, so, any questions? While you're thinking of a question or two, I'm going to ask Jeray Carter if she wants to stand up and just tell us a little bit about some of the jobs that are available at John, or internships that are available at John.
are going are to be going up hopefully before the career fair if they try to cooperate with me. Um, in like a very large variety of areas. So uh, one big push that we're really trying to ramp up in the office is our domain knowledge. So if you have an agronomy, crop science, or soil science background, we need you. As a crop science alumni, like we need you. <laughs> um, so you know, undergrad all the way through grad school. Um, we're also looking for data science um, positions. So anyone who's interested in data science, data analytics, um, working with databases, data engineering, like the full range, um, as well as looking for um, research positions. So this would focus a little more on um, like ag tech research, looking at journal articles, looking at business databases, kind of understanding uh, what kind of ag other ag tech information is out there to help with our projects. We're also looking for a variety of engineers, so anything in the computer science, electrical, um, computer engineering, systems, tests, like industrial, really like all the majors, ag and bio, um, and also an RF engineer, so if you have any radio frequency experience, um, that is something highly specialized that we're looking for, but um, something that's really going to help us with some of our future work. So, yeah, and a little bit about the part-time student program. Um, it's special because it's essentially like a year-round program. So we hire each semester, but it's 10 to 20 hours a week, 40 hours a week in the summer. And so during the school year, we accommodate your school schedules to, to put the hours in. So. And that's pretty much the model of every site in the research park in terms of the hours, you know, part-time during the school year, full-time during the summer. Dre, I think you need to broaden your range of types of students that you're hiring. Very narrow. Um, anybody know some RF people? Because I swear to God, this is a huge trend in research for companies, and we don't know where they are. So if anybody knows where to find some good RF interns, or, or knows any friends who are doing in that space, tell them to look at the research part. Because literally, this is one of these things that kind of popped out of nowhere. We, I could not tell you that we had a, a job posting for anything related to radio frequency in the last 10 years that I've worked in the research park, and then all of a sudden this year, I have four companies that are looking for those types of students. So uh, just something to know that there's trends uh, that are oftentimes technology trends that we'll, we will see before lots of other places will see them, which is one of the exciting things about working in the park. Thank you, Jerry. Any questions, I guess, for Dre before I, let, I make her get off the microphone? You guys. <laughs> Thank you. So the data science positions that you mentioned, are they only for interns or for full-time as well? I'm just looking for interns uh, right now. Um, we only have one full-time position currently open in our office. It's a staff software engineer technical coach. Um, we're looking for someone that has about three-ish years of like work experience working with um, guiding technical projects, um, guiding data science types of projects, software engineering projects, and um, managing a student team, like 10 to 15 IT students. Um, so that's the only full-time position that we currently have in our office. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess specifically for, for John Deere, but kind of in general too, um, do a lot of the companies in Research Park try to like graduate their interns into like other locations, say like John Deere headquarters or uh, somewhere else instead of staying in Research Park? Yeah, so our part-time student program, um, we really try to funnel our students into full-time positions at Deere. Um, there's kind of a couple of different ways. We have uh, development programs, so they're rotational programs. Um, there's a few in that space. The two that we're kind of, I spend the most time helping out with would be the engineering development program and the data analytics, um, or data, yeah, data analytics development program. Um, and essentially they're like three year rotations. You do one year with, um, three one year uh, stints with different teams. So you get to rotate throughout the country and just see different parts of the company. Um, but there's also full time roles as well. So our part time student program is something that we try to really try to follow our students into full-time positions, especially because you can work long-term and you earn service credit with the company as well. So some of the students actually come in above people who just graduate and have never done an internship with us, they get more vacation days and better benefits. 
So, just want to put that out there, uh, the benefits of being in, in the program that way. Um, but then, um, we also sometimes have students who will do
first sense is really casual. Um, it's one of the really nice things. Uh, it's been, I, as far as I know, there's no dress code, and uh, people are very, um, well, one of the most uh, benefit of just being very casual dress, but also it's a lot of people do work from home, uh, sort of at will. It's like if you are sick, you just text the Slack channel and you can work from home, so it doesn't matter really what you like at all. Yeah, I mean, I don't even, I, I'm not even sure if there is a dress code. Uh, there may be in like the actual corporate employee handbook, maybe, but not that I've been told. So yeah, I mean, I can probably wear anything that's appropriate. And uh, I like to dress up a little, uh, personally, but, you know, it's, it's very casual. That's one of the benefits, I would say. Uh, probably depends on who's in the office that day. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe if the CEO coming. is coming, you might actually dress a little yeah. nicer. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to wear your pajamas. That doesn't happen that every day. day. I think John here is the exact same way. A lot of times, actually, I go from deer to school to deer in like the same day. Pretty much anything that you can wear to class, you can wear to deer, which I really like. Except that there may be some execs that you might have to dress a little bit nicer, but it's very casual, just jeans and a t-shirt. Although I also like to, to dress up just a little. So I say pretty much the same for Aku as well. There is no specific dress code. You it's casual, whatever you're comfortable in. And personally I dress up when I have a presentation, be it virtual or in person. I, I that time because you want to look good when you're presenting, but no, no hard passwords. It's, it's completely up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Any other things you want to add, Jean? No, I was just, it's, sometimes you just ask me, like, you know, what did you wear? Things like that. So, yeah. I guess I would say, what did you wear to your interview? Do you remember that? Yeah? yeah. Oh, I, I wore a show. So my interview was virtual, it wasn't in person at that time. Uh, but I remember wearing a shirt and yeah, and just never lost up. Because <laughs> like only uh, because yeah, like it's a virtual interview, all you get is like how you look, your face and uh, your shirt. So yeah, that was for me. Danielle maybe had a different experience. Yeah. <laughs> my interview was in 2018, so it was quite a while ago, but I do remember wearing business professional, like a full business suit and some nice heels. But I think that was because it was also pre-COVID. But I would recommend if you have an interview, definitely dress professionally, dress for the job, and then once you get it, you'll be able to be more relaxed. Yeah, my interview was like exactly, not exactly, but like around approximately a year ago, and it was actually Ben that interviewed me. So yeah, um, I was wearing like a suit and a tie. You uh, was overdressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was business, business formal, business formal above the waistline, beach casual above the waistline. <laughs> Mine was on Zoom, so I just wore a regular t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, you know, nobody, no company wants you to go broke buying interview clothes, just remember that. So I do know that there's resources for that on campus and things like that, but also. Um, I often find that it's very awkward because people will come in with in suits to interview and then, you know, like most of the earth sense people would be dressed like Santa's. I mean, they wear those t-shirts basically all the time. So I actually make fun of um, Chin May, who's the CEO. If I see him and he's not wearing that t-shirt, he will hear about it from me. So. <laughs> Any other functional questions about that? We do get a question a lot about where do students work. Um, you know, Sam mentioned this a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys want to address that. And I know that this is constantly fluctuating, so um, tell them maybe you can answer that. And I think things have changed over time. Where? Where do students work? So in the office? Mm, yeah. Remote? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a mix. It's a hybrid. Uh, especially during the, uh, actually no, this, this is across the board. So, it's a, it's a hybrid schedule, you know. You can be fully in person if you want, um, or you can have a few remote days uh, as well. Uh, we had some fully remote interns during the summer as well, so uh, I'm not sure if that's still going to be a possibility this summer. I said I know. I know Pergola has changed that policy. Yeah. There will be no more fully remote. Yeah, I think um, there was like sort of a, a contrast between how uh, 
close the in-person interns we're getting, whereas the remote interns would be kind of hard for us to include them as, as much. We, we definitely tried, but you know they're not physically there, so they couldn't get ice cream with us, they couldn't go to karaoke with us. So, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very flexible, I would say. EarthSense is uh, very cool about it. You can be 100% in person, 100% remote, or you can take remote days if you are sick, or if you just had a bad day and want to work remotely, or if you I don't know, have a doctor's appointment sometime in the day, like, I don't have to commute to the office and back. But if you are in person, you just work at the Atkins building under the end of the research park, wherever it else is. And it's a really nice office and a nice space, and nice people. We're in the same building. No, there are four of them. Yeah. I think John here is flexible, but we have a preference for working in person. Uh, I think it also depends on the type of work you're doing, but in all the teams I've been on, they really just prefer to be working in person. What's unique about John here is we actually have three locations at Research Park. We have an office and two labs. So at my time at Deer, I'm kind of balanced between going to the office one day or going to the lab the next, although I mainly find myself working in the office now. But again, if you're doing more work in, let's say, soil science, maybe in the lab, or if you're working on data science, you might be in the office. So it just depends on what you're doing. It goes back and forth. Like, I can spend part of my day in the lab and then part of the office. Um, so yeah, for ACLO, uh, it's very flexible again. Uh, you can be you can work completely remote or you can also go to the office. I personally like going to the office, so I make it a point to go at least twice or thrice in a week. But I have my peers in terms who like who prefer working from home because at times they're traveling or they have uh, you know hectic schedules, which is why they cannot make it to the office. But uh, it, it's completely flexible. It, it really depends upon your schedule as long as you're getting your work done. So in a second. Guys, for just you know any final words, but I did want to just plug again Research Park Career Fair is February 28th. It is at the Illinois Conference Center from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, please check it out. I think you can look at it on Handshake, of course, on our website if you want to see who the employers that will be there. We have almost 30 employers that have registered by this point, and believe it or not, we will get more because they know that we're softies and we'll let them register last minute. So that doesn't include men and jury. I'm sure that they've already gotten their registrations so, done. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, of course, uh, Champaign Urbana Ag Tech Week is March 6th through the 10th. Um, and the Ag Tech Summit, of course, being March 7th, which is also at the Illinois Conference Center, so same, bl same place. Um, all day long, we feed people a lot there. So if you want some free food, definitely check it out. But that's not, of course, the only reason to go. Some great companies will be there talking about things that you all probably care about. So we have a panel about um, sustainability, one about uh, carbon and you know what is real and what's not real when it comes to uh, carbon, one about the intelligent farm. Uh, we also have a panel that's very popular, which is actually growers and producers, so get in the heads of the growers and producers out there who are um, the ones who are the future users potentially of this technology. So um, it is free, so uh, there's no barriers, hopefully, for people to attend. All right, so panel, final thoughts. Anyone want to give some final thoughts? Tell them I'm going to pick on you first. <laughs> You always have something. I think it's I think it's uh it's easy to go first actually because you get to cover all the points before it comes. <laughs> uh, final thoughts. Me personally, I think interning at Cargill was one of the best ways I could have spent my summer last summer and the last two semesters as well, I suppose, <laughs> working part time. But if you are planning to apply to Cargill for a summer internship, I would highly highly recommend it. And because it was honestly just absolutely great experience. I don't have enough adjectives to um, describe it, I suppose. And I think that sort of goes uh, across the board with Research Park as well, because I was seeing a lot of parallels to how other intern cohorts were behaving with each other. And it was, it was, 
It was a very great experience for me personally. So I would highly, highly recommend it. Uh, Earthsense is the coolest place to work at. Sorry. <laughs> but um, everyone's super nice. It's a really, really conducive environment for learning and like watching the company grow and develop, even in like the year I've been there, it's very cool to see how everything comes together and how we're just working together to create a very like innovative and unique uh, line of robots. Well, I would highly recommend you work for John Deere. It's a great company. I am so incredibly thankful for being with them for over five years at this point. And I was able to learn so much just from work itself outside of my classes. It's really incredibly valuable. There's so few chances where you're able to go to class and then walk to work. Like, there's not many research parks around, so I'd recommend definitely applying. And if, if you are interested, definitely go to the career fair and make sure to look up different people who, for instance, work at John Deere. I highly recommend doing that beforehand. So my experience is Apple, at Apple has been just amazing. Uh, it's been such a good learning experience. I really, like, I love my work. I love the team that I'm working with. It's super flexible. I've, I've got to work on so many different projects till now. And just, you know, expand my technical skills and learn so much. So I would highly recommend all of you to apply, uh, look at Apple, the job postings, and also attend the career fair because Apple will be there. Um, Go ahead and talk to our site director, she's super nice and uh, yep, I will be lots of good for you. So uh, before we thank our panel, I did want to just say that you know if you see a job posting on our job board, don't wait till the career fair to apply to it. Apply now, because when then when you go to the career fair, you can say, hey, I applied for this job. So what I like to say is if you see something, seize it, because it's not unusual for companies to get inundated with applications. And sometimes they'll close a lot quicker than they even realize they're going to close it. So don't wait. Definitely come to our career fair. You already took the first step by being here today, which is great. So as we're giving our panel a warm round of applause, you're also giving yourselves a warm round of applause. So thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks to our friends at Cargill and John Deere who are here. And of course, to our amazing panelists. Thank you so much.